Hey there, Builder Blog. So this week I'm trying to do the impossible. I am trying to think like Will Bales and design a robot as cool as Hypershock. I'm actually trying to make a little mini Hypershock. And, uh, well, it's hard. It's very hard. Will made a very cool robot. And he did it in a very odd way, which is what makes it so cool. Um, da Vinci once said, when he stared at the stone, he could see David inside it, and he just had to chisel it away. Chisel away until everyone else could see what he saw. And, uh, I'm looking at my stone here. I don't see hypershock. So let's see how we can figure this out. And, uh, and Diana's here with a cat. Hi, Nolan. Are, are you being forced into a video against your will? Yes. <laughs> Bye, Builder Vlog. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here's where I start. Actually, I guess to be completely honest, this is where I start. I try to do a top-down view of the robot. I try to imagine how he's got those jetting pods on the side. There's going to be wheels on either side of it, and I need some area sticking out, and I should probably put the cutout in here, but I, I didn't. And I, I throw some rough dimensions on this for about the scale of my bot bash size, and I extrude that into the first shape. And so after we do the extrude, we are left with this. And I like to... That Da Vinci quote I just did, yeah, this is that moment. This is my piece of stone now, and I need to see if I can cut a hypershock out of it. So our next step is cut the room for the blade. The next step after that, I decide where the motors are going to go. And so I've put a hole that goes through this all the way here, and holes here and here to receive the four motors to give us four-wheel drive. I chamfer the back end for my next step. Trying to just round this out. So this is the big cutout into the main body. That's the cavity where we're going to put all the electronics. Filleting, a little more filleting, a lot of filleting. And then we do our next big cut. And on this one, I made sketch planes to try to get some dimensions into this. So I did a chop right down the side. And if I show you what that sketch looks like, you can see I picked the front and I literally just made these little cat ear shapes and I sliced off the corners of the frame. Boom. I'm doing that to try to get the odd shape Will has on his robot. And then I go ahead and I fill back in some little roof pieces that cut into the cavity. And then a little more filleting on the outside. Or we're doing a cut in here to do our power switch. And this is going to be a whole bunch of power switch stuff. Because... We've gone ahead and made the hole, made the little countersink to file stuff in. Continue to cut that through. A little more chamfering to try to get that all even. Fill in the holes I made. Fill in the other hole I made. Then we're cutting that down. Filling it out so it's even. We're going to cut this section down. Fill it. In fact, I'm just going to do all those fillets at once. Fill it, fill it, fill it. Everything's round. So these are slots I put in this to grab the zip ties to allow us to zip tie around the motor to help hold the motor in. And I, I do like zip ties. I like zip ties a lot. And then we have to do some filleting. A little more cutting to complete it. You don't want the zip tie proud. If the zip tie is proud, a weapon or something is going to slice it. So I always make these little indentations that the zip ties can live in and live under. But you can see how there's this little hole right here that goes into the motor housing. And because, you know, I, I want this to 
we're making a real robot here. A little more fillets. Hi, Builder Blog. I just wanted to announce the two winners of the giveaway from last week. So the winner of the Hacksmith is Electro Productions because his favorite fight of blacksmiths was blacksmith versus sawblaze. And the winner of the Craig Danby piece is Force of Will Gaming. Okay. And then some numbers. Because Apex apparently broke the arena in Robot Wars. Okay, bye! <laughs> she did not like that. Nope. <laughs> She's like, where's my plate of tuna? You promised tuna. I didn't promise tuna, but... As you can see, there's just a lot of stuff going on. And if we flip this all the way over, you can see I've done all the features in here. Two more. Now we're adding in the uprights for the weapon. Expanding that out. Then chamfering that down. Going ahead, detailing this. We did some more cuts, a little more filleting. Then I'm doing slots so I can mount forks. Yeah. Doop, doop, doop. A little more chamfering here to try to make this look more dynamic. Around those front edges. And boom holes for the cabling and technically I could print this and make a working robot I've got places to mount my motors I've got my power switch I've got my charging port I have the weapon motor mount I have the wedge mounts I've got the cabling holes this doesn't look very hyper shocky I'll be honest um I think I need to sit here and think what would Will Bales do What is this, endgame? No, absolutely not. Too many straight lines start over. Since the biggest takeaway from the Secrets of Hypershock episode was merch. 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 I'm now in my Hypershock shirt. I think I'm pretty merched out. Merch. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is these side pods are too wide and too big and just don't look like Hypershock. We're going to cut them away and then fill in a new wall that's at an angle. Once we have that wall at an angle, we're going to build a box on top of it so I can get something in two different angles at once. Oh. Nah, it should be cooler. Like. 20% cooler. So next up, we're going to put these little boxes on the inside of my wannabe jet engines on the outside of the frame. And this is so we can hide a finger tech nut strip in it. Merch. <laughs> next up, I wanted a little more ground clearance and to give room for a bottom plate. So we're just going to take a 16th inch off the entire bottom of the robot. To reduce as many straight lines as possible, we've now put a box connecting the two uprights and drafted it back until it covers the entire top portion of the robot. We then went ahead, we chamfered the edges, and we did stuff to blend it in. But now we're going to cut a box to put the Malenki on top, so it'll be our status light. Alright, so I think the thing most not hyper shocky about this kind of in-game looking. Oh my god. Why? I'm awake! I'm still working! Just checking. Next up, we're going to do the mounting holes for the top plate. I'm going to put two nut strips on the inside of the robot, just on each side of the Malenki board. And these holes are going to allow us to bolt the top plate on. That, that's a right angle, not hyper shocking enough. Do it again. Oh. 
Okay. So, since we moved the Malenki board to the middle, we've had to move the charging port off to the side. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to do the inside details and the outside details to get the charging port here on the little right hand corner. With all that detailed in, we're going to countersink the motor mounts, we're going to do some filleting around the front edges to make sure all the weapon stuff will work and we won't cut the wires as they come into the robot. And now we're going to start detailing out the up front motor mounts. Once again, I'm going to use my zip tie strategy to help hold that in. Then we add some posts and we're going to put a hex down them. This is to allow us to put some standoffs in so we'll have holes to screw and unscrew the top plate add some ears for self-writing, and we are really down to the final details here. Then we just shorten these pods to make clearance for tires, and we're done. So it looks more hyper-shocky if we make this look like a jet engine thing, so I put this pointless detailing here. Is it pointless? No, because the point is to look cool. And then we do a few more extrusions on the inside. After playing with the CAD models so much, it's always so crazy to get the print in hand. As you see, I still have to take out all the film material. And yeah, it's kind of a waste having it print all of that. But uh, the, the sheen and the shine on the outside will live forever. the power switch, the charging port, the Malenki. <laughs> Hello cat. It's raining kitties. I've actually taken this to a party already. There's my front forks. Aren't they glorious? can't hyperextend. As a matter of fact, this thing's actually already fought at three parties, but with that direct mount straight to the brushless motor. Um, fortunately, these take a dollar fifty of material and print in 20 minutes. So uh, we will slap just a new one on probably once a week. And the foam tires, this, this part is foam. I know the frame looks a lot like foam, but yeah, I really do like the finish on this. And let's see the inside. So I'll admit, I did not model all the interior. Like I, I made a spot for the power switch and like I knew this is how I was gonna mount those motors. And yeah, just a lava hot glue to hold the charging port. A little janky, but it works. Then we have the 316 standoffs. They actually get screwed in via the top, so they can't pull out. And then that tapped hole is actually what holds the base plate on for servicing. And the battery just happens to fit here nicely, and the weapon speed controller fits over here. And I did leave a JST plug so I can unplug the battery if I need to. And I do have the balance port here if I want to charge that way. You can see there's the zip tie that holds the other motor. It wasn't quite enough, so I did put a little dab of hot glue just behind it. And I had finger tech hubs on here, but 
Hypershock is so well known for those big flashy wheels, I had to print a little gold hub. And you do have to take the tire off to swap the forks, but you know, I'm probably never gonna change out these titanium forks, which I had water jet cut. I made a whole bunch of these once upon a time. But yeah, and if you look deep in here, you can see there's that Fingertech nut strip I was talking about. It's embedded in the frame, and that's what's holding on the upper panels. And if we look in here, you can see the other Fingertech nut strip that buries into that little side pod to do all the fancy outer detailing armor. Those are really handy because they don't spin. You don't need to put a wrench on the back. They're just in. They plop into place and then they work. So yeah. There she is, ladies and gentlemen. My little hypershock. Name ideas. Okay. Um, Tiny Shock. No. Uh, um, uh, Sparky McGee. No. Um, uh, but Farce. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> All that I'm out of ideas. I don't know what else. Sip Sap. Mm. Well, the true Hypershock experience. I am exhausted and uh, I'm going to bed. So Miller Blog, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Please like and subscribe. And uh, I will catch you next week when I do something. <laughs> oh, tell me your favorite part about Hypershock and you can win some Hypershock stickers. All right, guys. Later. Move the mouse. Whee! It's just... I'm, I'm red. I'm gray. I'm red. I'm gray. I'm red, I'm gray, I'm red, I'm gray, I'm red, I'm gray. Cat! Okay, somehow that was surprisingly helpful. And we're a few more steps along. Look, we have a charging port. I helped! <laughs>